Perfect. So this um, conversation is between Michelle and Natalie about work passions, really. And uh, we got off to a little late start because I'm a hurricane survivor and the tree guy finally just he had a cancellation. He showed up, but they're now gone. The tree's gone. So rebuilding yeah. begins. So, yeah, so Natalie, um, I'm going to share this with our current intern who's at Arizona State University. His name is Ben. And so I just thought, you know, it might be beneficial for him, too. And just but how can I help you? Awesome. So I graduated two years ago with my degree in marketing and public relations. And then I started working at a nonprofit um, in Wisconsin doing their marketing um, and I'm now going to be moving back home to Illinois to Chicago with my family. Um, my mom says hi, by the way. Um, hi, Nancy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and she, and so I'm moving with them, and I'm going to be looking for a different job. I'm also looking at possibly mastering in psychology, and I saw oh. that you had a master's. Yeah. Wow. So, I know. So I saw that you also had a master because I was originally looking at talking to you about public relations. And then I saw that you had a master's in human development. And I was like, OK, this is even better. Um, so, yeah, I'm really looking at how to manage both when the right time to jump into that would be. And then also just, you know, looking for a job, whether that's in public relations or um, advert, you know, the difference between, I guess, those career paths. So I got a few questions, but. Yeah. So are you, are you thinking about going? So the question is, when should you go back to school? If you should go back to school or how to pursue a job in Chicago? Yes. So I, cause originally when I was reaching out, it was cause I'm deciding between, you know, advertising public relations um, really, if I wanted to work in Chicago, what it would look like to really narrow down my job search. Um, and then I'm also interested in oh. long. Yes. Okay. So if so there's two in marketing, then what type of marketing and yes, work? yes, how to discern that, um, and then yeah, and then my whole separate thing was this pers pursuing um, a master's in psychology, which I wasn't going to bring up until I saw that you had a master's in it, and then I was like, okay, well, you know, then I can just add that on. So but, if we first, if you do go back to school, let's just say you do go back to school, what's the timeline on that? So I saw that there's part-time programs they offer for four years. There's also, you know, there's full-time for two. Um, but that would be ultimately a career change, I think, for me then to... Maybe. Well, that's what... So then that was part of my questioning was how much did your career change, you know, after mm. um, you got okay. your mastery in that. So, so yeah. If you stay in marketing, it, it, interestingly enough, we have another woman who uh, works with us. Her name is Sarah. And Sarah uh, was a therapist and left left being a one-on-one -on -one counselor to do marketing. Mm. So it's not just me. I think that it's an interesting thing, I think in general, and, and I'm going to share something with about, about my master's thesis that, which may surprise you. And then I'm like, uh, then I really want to use this recording for something more than just our conversation. So I don't know if you're, if you would yeah, absolutely. allow me to put this on YouTube or not, but this, this is actually part of what drew my business partner, Drew and I, know your mom um, because we all um, have landmark in common, yes. right? We've all done communication courses and different things with landmark. Now I'm starting to perform, right? Because I'm like, oh, maybe we have a wider audience than Natalie and Ben. Um, so my master's thesis, surprisingly enough, let me just backtrack and I'll tell you what Drew and I are doing. And then I'm going to tell you how to discern what type of marketing you want to do. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about mental health and in the industry. Okay. Uh, so Drew, when, so I, um, I learned PR in Chicago, by the way, when I was in school for the, in theater at DePaul. Okay. And I would uh, go to my classes and then after classes, I would go to a woman who used to produce for WGN radio. She did. PR in 1989 and 1990 out of her condo on Lakeshore Drive. So this is way before the internet when we would do, uh, would do her letters, her cover letters for her as basically her secretary. I would just put one or I, I had a brother typewriter that would only uh, hold in memory three letters. Mm. <laughs> so like times have changed, but she taught me how to do uh, earned editorial pitching. Okay. So that I'm going to talk, I'm going to go back to that in just a second. Uh, when, 
so I went, it was in theater and then um, I went, I was doing t a television production for a nonprofit doing uh, the, uh, basically a TV training program for the National Head Start Association. So I was in nonprofit work, not a whole lot of money in nonprofit, but it's very rewarding. And then of course I'm in a landmark course about my life and really like, you know, are my choices my own choices or are they a reaction to the way I was conditioned? And I was like, you know what? I don't know that I really want to work in nonprofit. Mm -hmm. Similar to what you're probably like yeah. now going, right? I was in my late twenties. I had a very lovely career in nonprofit education and I did the money course at Landmark and I really wanted to create myself as a philanthropist. So I was in my late twenties. I'm now 55. So you get to kind of see like what happened right after that course. And I did the money, money seminar. I did all the Landmark courses. I was really big into them. And I, when I created myself as a philanthropist, I could see that I had become an actress and um, I was a writer and I was making a living at that, but I was making no money at that. And I did all that because I, I would make better art if I, the more broke I was, the better my art would be. So that, you know, and you can like, you meet people today, they're like, oh yeah, you know, my yes. art is really meaningful if I'm just like really in pain all the time or struggling and whatnot. And I was like, I don't really want a life of struggle, right? I was like, oh, I'll just be an entrepreneur. And then I had the skill set from public relations that I had learned while I was in school, make, working myself through college. Okay. In my, but I decided before I wanted to be an entrepreneur at the time I was doing that seminar, I was also getting my master's degree in human development because the issue about education and nonprofits is you're really only respected as your letters after your name. So here I was a producer for the National Head Start Association, but when I would talk in a room, I wasn't respected as much as the PhDs or the master's degrees. So I was really only getting my master's degree for that old job, you see? So I ended my um, career in nonprofit and started my own not, uh, public relations firm that was in 2002 with Drew. It was like, really like, you know, just a full creation was not going to happen if I hadn't done landmark courses. And I was like, well, what if I actually created a career where I could move anywhere in the world? So I started to think about the type of life I wanted first. And I was into whitewater kayaking because I created, I want adventure in my life at Landmark. So all of a sudden I'm like doing all this kayaking and this outdoor stuff. And I was like, yeah, but my job really should be in New York, LA or DC or Chicago. But what I really want to do is hike, bike, paddle. So how yeah. do you do that? You know, how do you do that? So I decided I was going to create a job like the one that I learned from the WGN producer. And I was like, all I really need is a phone. All I really need is a computer. By that point in 2002, you know, the internet was, you know, new, we were starting to get lots of internet opportunities, not like it is today, but then it was like promising, right? I was like, at least need a phone. Okay. In my, I went ahead and completed my master's degree. It was really hard to complete while I was working, Natalie. Mm. I highly recommend choosing one or the other. Got it. Because it's, it was really like it, not fun years. Like I had to go sequester my, I was, you know, and I was just take my word for it. It's just better to be focused on one or the other. I know a lot of people do both. It was very hard for me. Uh, didn't have fun those years. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like just to get that crap done. And then you're always like dealing with, oh, I didn't keep my word about, you know, writing that or keeping that done or that schoolwork. And that. And my uh, university was in California. They were all educators. They had a very progressive program that was, they didn't grade you. And I'm, I'm one of those, like, I got to get the A. So because they were pass fail, that was the first time in my life I allowed myself to have incompletions, to fail. I really got present to, I was like what I self-started and what I didn't. Mm -hmm. 
And that's why I think it was so hard because you're, you know, if you've got a client who's knocking on the door, ringing the phone, wanting attention from you, you, you're going to do that. You know, you've got friends who want to go biking or paddling or whatever. You're going to go do that instead of, you know, so then all of a sudden Sunday comes around and you're like, crap, I need to go sequester myself in the library or I'm not going to get anything done. And then that's, you know, that's that life. So in my thesis program, though, because I was, I did have a PR firm by that point, I decided to figure out how people pursued health, wealth, and love. That's the things that really make up our news cycles. How do they, how do they do that in today's society? So I interviewed uh, 50 people and that made up my thesis. And in that process of, of creating that thesis, I learned that Edward Bernays is the father of PR. He's if you if you just put in father of PR, it's Edward Bernays. He was the nephew of Sigmund Freud. Mm -hmm. He wrote um, a series of books on propaganda. Basically, all of our marketing today is because of this man, and he was a master of propaganda. So the manipulation of the masses. From the point of view of the elite and the educated, it's disgusting if you really get into, you know, how he was a white, wealthy man, nothing wrong with him because he knew what he was doing and what he was selling. And he was actually interviewed before he died. He was interviewed by David Letterman. And it's a really interesting interview. Um, he had was given like some type of doctorate or something from a university and David Letterman was making a big deal about it. And he just like, you know, Edward said, you know, it's interesting because everybody was applauding, whatever. He goes, it's interesting that you care about that, that you care about this degree. That's what's interesting to me. And he's right, right? Like that, like, how do you manipulate people when they think that you're credible? And so his whole body of work, that's why a lot of people who go into marketing are also really interested in what motivates human behavior. Mm -hmm. And I assert that's why you're kind of flirting with the two. Yes, definitely. And I originally did have a, I pursued a degree in psychology first. And then um, I switched just out of, I think, partial intimidation of the mat. You know, it's like, it's, yeah, it was in, it was intimidating work. So I switched to marketing. And um, now that I'm in the career field, I'm just not sure that this is in, exactly in line with maybe the kind of difference I'm committed to making. Exactly. Yeah. So that's, yeah. So Drew and I went, you know, of course he's been my business partner now for you know 20 plus years. And so when I started to do that work, we then took on as a PR firm, educating marketing professionals, how to move beyond that manipulation. If mm. you look at our, our, world of PR today, it is about clickbait. It's about propaganda, manipulation. It's There's not a whole lot of integrity yeah. in publicity. So for people like you and Ben, our Gen Zs, the hope here is that you're going to get so sick of the way that this clickbait world is creating. Have you seen the movie Idiocracy? I have not. Write it down. That's your homework. Okay. I'm sure Ben's like, oh, I've seen it. It's hilarious. And it's also sad. Mm -hmm. it's, it's hilarious. Idiocracy. Um, you can I think you can find it free on YouTube. It's an old movie, but unfortunately, we're it they were like, oh, it, you know, it's gonna come way, way in the future, right? It's upon us. And it's it's mm -hmm. it's the it's basically the dumbing down of the masses and what happens yes. to you, right? What happens when our educated couples, our breeders, decide not to have children, and then our uneducated masses have one to 10 children, and then you can kind of see like what happens to the masses when they become, when we have a lot of uneducated people, and it's, yes. it's a really, really funny movie, um, but here we are, so then uh, the hope for the future is wouldn't it be great if we had a world where our marketing, the messages that we're constantly told on a daily basis through our, you know, our doom scrolling, our uh, news cycle, it's all so negative. 
So then that creates a particular life for us. And that's what, um, that's what I'm hoping to make a difference with. Drew and I are really educating people on Edward Bernays. And, you know, we're still in a marketing paradigm that was created in the 1920s mm-hmm. that one of Edward Bernays's famous campaigns was for cigarettes. There was a problem that the cigarette companies had that women weren't smoking. So Edward's like, well, let's just, cr- let's just combine it with the, fa- the suffragette movement, have suffragettes walk down the Macy parade, smoking cigarettes. And then women will co- equate cigarettes with freedom and the independent thought, the will, you know, the ability to vote and so forth. And then, then you have things like Virginia Slims, you've come a long way, baby, back in the 70s and 80s, right? That's, that is Edward Bernays' work in a heartbeat. He also did lots of stuff around convenience foods after the World War II. Housewives would not use the box instant food because they felt it was for lazy housewives. So he told... Betty Crocker and all those companies, hey, just, you know, put a, just have them add an egg, just have them add oil, and then they're not so lazy. And then that's what, that's what then instigated the whole convenience food movement. Those are just two examples of many in his illustrious career as a propaganda Mm -hmm. specialist, okay? If we can use the propaganda for good, and then good is also subjective, how do you do that? When we look at the marketing world in a nutshell, I'm going to explain marketing in like five seconds. Okay. Paid, earned, owned media. And this is what you have to ask yourself. How do you want to, what do you want to work in? Paid media is advertising. People pay a, a venue to get their message out. Owned media, they own their media right? Websites, books, proprietary information, all their social media accounts. And they own the the delivery method and the message. These are two places that people own or have control over the messaging. Um, Paid media is the best media to drive traffic of the masses, right? Owned media is about conversion of a sale. So you think about rock concerts. If you're wanting people to know that, um, you know, a particular, um, Billie Eilish is coming to town, then you're going to use paid media to drive people to a particular website where they can get information about Billie's schedule. Um, you're going to use, she, her people are going to use her owned assets to convert the sale of her music products or her tour. We're, when we talk about public relations, there's an old saying that says, and you may have heard this in your school, um, people pay for advertising. They pray for PR because PR is earned editorial media. And it's the art of getting people mentioned in other people's paid or owned assets. So the job of a publicist or public relations is the uh, a networker, a salesperson, mm-hmm. a, hey, I'm a master of relationships. I'm going to call you and pitch you a story, connect you to this other... I'm going to, I'm going to connect you with Natalie. She's the best thing since sliced bread. You've got to interview her and use her as a source. Please use her as a source and then mention her in your vet press venues, your influencers owned assets or paid assets for a co- a collaboration. Most people are going to see that on Instagram, right? And then there's a mutual benefit there. But in the news cycle, they're just using them as, as expert thought leaders and their whatever they're going to say from their expertise as an, as an industry leader. So you can ask yourself, do I want to, you know, pay 
for the play? Do I want to have people um, be able to convert their products and sell their products more effectively? Or do I want to be more of a networker and connect people, right? That's, you got your paid, your owned, and your earned. I am an earned media specialist. And I'm going to, I'm going to put our bit.ly in the chat. Um, 21 day PR action guide. This is about earned editorial. So this is about, here it is, bit.ly uh, um, slash PR action guide for people who might not be able to see the chat. Um, or you guys can contact me at Michelle Tennant and I'll send that to you. So at Michelle Tennant. Okay, M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E-T-E-N-N-A-N-T. -L -L -E -E -N -N so when we look at earned editorial, it's the pitch, right? So um, this morning I've been um, talking about my client's new book and then um, trying to get TV producers to do a talk show segment about the new book. And the new book deals with um, home decoration, and um, so then how do you decorate your home on election night so that your family argues less or that mm -hmm. your uh, political candidate wins? Stuff like that, right? Or you, you've seen it this, you know, you just look at, at your feeds from your, your favorite news stations. You know, in the, in the next segment, we're going to have Chef Natalie come in and do um, Halloween barbecue. Okay. It's just, it's just education, you know, yeah. if it's on podcasts or radio or whatever, it's going to be entertainment. So we've gone through the history of the father of PR, how I got into PR and why human development, ma my master's degree in human development helps me communicate to the clients, the motivation of human behavior and why we need to educate or entertain with particular topics around health, wealth, and love. I decided to be my own entrepreneur because I had created myself as a philanthropist and I wanted the freedom to move around the world. It's come to pass in spades. And with the pandemic and now Hurricane um, Helene, I have a lot of freedom to deal with life as my own boss, which would not be the case if I was working for other people or, or I wouldn't have the funds to take the tree off the garage if I was still a nonprofit. You see what I'm saying? Those mm -hmm. are things to really think about. And I can knock off and go mountain biking anytime I want to, as long as my work is done for my clients, you know? Yes. Okay. So when you're looking at advertising versus owned asset, I think it depends on like what type of skills you bring and then what you want to just be, how you want to play. Yeah. You think about paid, owned, and earned, Natalie. What what calls to you? Um, well, I definitely I also have a minor in writing and I really I do enjoy writing. Um, I also love creating content. Um, so I think that creative writing really does go hand in hand with content creation. And um so I think that yeah. But what kind of see journalistic writing which is really upside down i do there's an old triangle right so you have the headline detail another detail another detail and it comes from old newspapers where the editor would just cut literally physically cut off the bottom of the article so that it would fit yeah. in paper yeah so i guess that kind of writing or there's for your conversion it's the funnel type of writing all about sales um then you've got advertising which is really about, um, it, it's it's pithy, it's short, it's catchy. It It's kind of like that, like you can't get out of, you can't, it, you know, like I was always fascinated with um, Tabitha from Bewitched. Mm. And Aaron was the, the husband who, I didn't really care about the, the show itself. I was fascinated with Darren and his advertising campaigns, right? Like what had people dial in so when you talk about writing which type of writing are you which type and I think it's kind of that drive to a specific market kind of thing versus the sale so I do think it 
it goes more in line with maybe that what does catch people's attention. Maybe it is short and maybe it is create, you know. Maybe it's advertising then. Yeah. Okay. So there you go. That's one way to kind of get at where yes. you go, right? And so um, there's a particular um, series, though, in the advertising industry. Well, there's a lot of them. I was just thinking there's just a ton of that. Advertising is very intense. It's cutthroat, um, but it's also can be a lot of fun. You're going to be in Chicago it's going to be great, right? Cause you're in a top market where there's going to be a lot of advertising agencies. And there's also going to be a lot of independent consultants. If I were you sitting in Chicago looking and be like, Oh, okay. And I just had this conversation with me and I realized, Hmm, I really do like advertising paid and I'm not, I'm not scared of paid media. I would start hitting up all the major ad agencies mm -hmm. and see if you can't land a really sweet job. And just get in there and just see if you like it. Definitely. Yeah. And I think that I really have been leaning, you know, I've just been looking at public relations for the fact of, you know, that's the other part of my um, degree, but I haven't looked too much into specific advertising um, agencies. So I think that that'll be interesting to look at. Well, if you wanted to do uh, some short stints with us, like that's, you know, Ben just contacted us and his, 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 his advisor said, why would you do PR? There's no money in it. Mm. Okay. And I was like, well, it depends on if you own your own company or not. Like I make a comfortable living, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, I don't know if I agree with that. Um, but it is definitely harder in today's marketplace to do pure earned editorial without a lot of my colleagues, especially my younger, you know, younger ages, those that are like really working with influencers are just paying to play. Like they're, just, yeah. they're basically combining, they're doing advertorials, right? So you're paying and it looks like it's an earned editorial opportunity, but it's not yes. a pure opportunity. Yeah. Right? It's not it's like the that build, the really building want. of the, it's like, it seems like the building of the network. Cause when you're not established, it is much harder, obviously to get um, mentions and right. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, that's this book, right? You can do, the, you can just kind of look through the book. It, it's, it separates PR, it's our process. And we basically, um, you create your materials. We specialize in online press kits and then we do the pitching and then it's how to really be great in interviews. So that's one piece of the pie. And if you have interest in, in actually doing PR, send me your resume, right, Natalie? So, and I can talk about it with our partners and Maybe you'll do some kind of stint like Ben is doing or whatever. I'm always open to having those kind of conversations. We Definitely. always are looking for new talent and that kind of thing. But if you're leaning toward the paid stuff um, and with chat, look, the other piece of it is in your future is artificial intelligence. And why would I have a copywriter when I can just chat yes. and see it? So that's another reason why I think it's important to if you're really interested in advertising to start to get your portfolio together, you're in Chicago, make hay with that, right? Like get a portfolio together with ad agencies and then you, then you can actually go on your own or go back to school or whatever. Mm, definitely. Yeah. Cause one of my uh, first questions was when was you think the most beneficial time to start your master's program? And I do think definitely establishing a career first and foremost, and then, um, well, you know, if I look back step. to, yeah, I don't, I don't mind my path where I did, you know, I did the traditional college after high school. I did not do a gap year. You know what I mean? And then um, when I was working for the nonprofits, they had a break in funding and I was kind of jealous of everybody who had done the gap year stuff. So I negotiated a, um, a time off for one summer. So I could become a whitewater ref guy. Mm. It was hilarious. My boss was like so upset that she like basically took me out to lunch to say, we can't, we're not going to be able to afford you for the summer. So she's basically laying me off. And I was like, do you mind if on the weekends I drive to West Virginia and learn how to be a ref guy? She's like, what? <laughs> she goes, you see, this is an opportunity. I was like, I really do. I was like, you know, my money, I've got some money put back. It'll be fine. Right. <laughs> That's awesome. It is awesome. And I was in my late 20s, right? That's so I'd already established 
a nice career, took a little bit of a break to kind of, you know, play outside, came back, got my master's degree, started my own. I resigned eventually from that position where uh, in the nonprofit world, right? Uh, but I had 10 years in you know, I uh, had, uh, had a nice resume already, you know, mm, definitely. Yeah. And I think it's, but then of course, when you wait that late, then you're playing with your master's degree in conjunction with the, the career. So that's the thing to really think about, but Hey, if you're not going to go into psychology, then, um, you can, it's always going to help at, it's going to having a psychological, training and the master's degree or PhD is going to help advertising or the, um, the squeeze pages of a funnel work, you know, when you're looking at your own asset stuff or how that also filters out to all the, um, social media or earn editorial where you're trying to establish credibility. Paid media is all about the traffic. Owned media is all about the sales conversion, that funnel and your earned media is all about credibility. So, you know, that's the way to really like ask yourself. Totally. Have fun though. You know, awesome. if you want to do PR, send me a resume. If you want to do advertising, just start sending your resume to all and choose the top ones. And I'm going to end with this. I worked for a, the second richest man in Cincinnati for many years when I was at that nonprofit. Cause that I was working for his nonprofits. Okay. He was a philanthropist. And I asked, his name was Mr. Mayerson. And I said, uh, I was giving him his coffee. Yes, he was very traditional. I was giving him his coffee that morning. And I said, Mr. Mayerson, I have aspirations to be an entrepreneur. Do you have any, do you have any advice for me? He goes, sit down, sit down. Sit down. And uh, he says, yes. He goes, you know, Marilyn Monroe was a beautiful woman. I was like, okay. <laughs> you know, just... And his office was spectacular. There was like original Rothko's and Picasso's. And I mean, he was just, he was an incredible man, right? Incredible self-made man. And um, he said, you know, everyone goes to the middleman. He said, even, you know, if you look at women, Marilyn Monroe was a very lonely woman because she was not really asked out a lot because people always felt like she, they were, her beauty was above them. He said, one of the things I always did in business is I went right to the top. I never mess around with the middle because everybody was messing around with the middle because everybody's got low self-esteem and they feel like they can't go to the top. You know, it's what we call in landmark, right? Make a bold request. Just go mm -hmm. to the top. And that was the best advice I could have ever had as an entrepreneur. Just go right to the top. Make yes. a request have a conversation with the top person definitely I like that a lot anything else that I can provide you um no this was actually much more than I expected so I really oh, yeah no I really appreciate it. I only came in with like two questions and I have a whole paper's worth so this is really it was right. amazing yeah all right I'll send thank you the you. recording okay awesome thank you so much and I'm so happy that everything is okay at your house and me too things are good yeah, after the hurricane it's it's horrific down here, Yeah. <laughs> but thank God I have, you know, I have distinctions from landmarks so they can transform my reality yeah. into something more powerful, you know, thank you though. Absolutely. Thanks for yeah. being flexible with that. Yeah. I would, oh yeah. We're no, so, absolutely. We're stoked. My husband, and I, my husband like came home, you know, yeah. he's like, oh my God, they're going to remove the tree today. And I'm like, great. <laughs> you know, and when you said 20 minutes, I was like, if you can get there, but it's not like really, cause you have a tree in your garage. That seems like a. Yeah, like no, it was just, it was just because they were, they were outside and I'm mean, like, yeah, this is my home. Like I, you know, I didn't have to drive anywhere. I just was having conversations with yes, yes, the tree yes. people because they had a cancellation and we're like, yes, thank you for fitting us in. You oh, know? wow. That's fun that they just were like, oh, we can sneak by and get your tree. Yeah, they just came because they gave us a quote, you know, they just been so backed up. Yes. Like, understandably. It, it, it's uh, people ask me like, what is, what is hurricane Helene like to experience it? Um, everything that you see on TV, it's worse. Mm. It's every single, almost every single yard has a tree down or a tree on their car or their garage or their home, or they're, they're on them. Like they're no longer here. And it's really apocalyptic and I can't explain it. Like it's just mind boggling, right? A hurricane touched down 
basically in Bavaria. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's the mountains. It doesn't make it doesn't make any logical sense. And these are the, these are why people need thinkers, educated people, and think about that when you watch um, Idiocracy. Yeah. Definitely. I'm, I'm very excited. I'm definitely it's a really funny movie. It'll be one of your, it's one of my favorites. It'll be one of your favorites too. It's one of those awesome. like, classics. Yeah. All right, awesome. Natalie, have a good time. Okay, great. Thank yeah. you so much. I appreciate it. Bye-bye.